this is a suggestion via a donation. Uh, the name of the video is, is retirement still achievable? Guys, I don't know. It's crazy. Like the whole idea of retirement um, and knowing that you're probably, you know, not going to make it in terms of like uh, whatever the savings goal is, right? Um, or if you're looking to, to utilize social security, et cetera, right? Um, it's, it's, it's daunting, guys. It is. It's absolutely. Like, how do you even come to the point where you have the ability to save the copious amounts of money that's required to retire semi-comfortably, right? Um, I think the recently I uh, well, recently I read somewhere that it takes one point eight million dollars to um, to to retire for well comfortably let's say to so retire comfortably at sixty thousand dollars a year, right? Um, if you want to do that, then that'll work, right? And that's that's if you're not investing, etc. You know, and all these other things by with that with your with the money that's actually sitting in your account, right? You get what I'm saying here, guys? And hopefully that money is in a high yield savings account. Let's, you know, we'll talk about that later, I guess, right? But um, retirement is uh, almost unachievable for the, for the majority of Americans. It's crazy. Richest country, history of the world, guys. And we can't afford to retire. That's crazy. Let's get it, guys. This episode is made possible by Audible. Follow the link below and get your first month absolutely free. You're not going to retire. Sorry, it's just not going to happen. Wow. I wish it could, really, but nope. Anyway, subscribe for more videos that make you feel bad. Next week, I'll be looking at videos of puppies and assigning each one of them terminal illnesses. This Bro. adorable little scamp is going to get kidney disease. Well. Okay, the reason I'm being so gloomy <laughs> is that retirement is genuinely what? under threat. After about a century of social security, retirement today is like a fish out of water. Okay. Dying in the slowest, most painful to watch way. Retirement is less secure than ever, despite all of us wanting to retire someday, and honestly, that doesn't seem like we're asking for a lot. You might even say the bare minimum after 40 odd years of near daily nine to five work. It's only right that one day we should all be nice and wrinkly, steeping in the balmy Florida air, just a stone's toss away from an alligator in sunglasses, and a burning pile of those math books that turn kids into commies. But some people have other plans. Go for ahead. example, the people we elect to represent us. What do politicians think about retirement? Well, some politicians- Retirement is not a good thing in terms of like the, the government size because now they have less taxable like people. I mean, obviously whatever you're, you're, you're paying yourself for the most part is being taxed, right? But it's less taxable people. Guys. Politicians aren't huge fans of End people of retiring day. and thereby not putting every last drop of sweat into the glorious chalice of economic productivity. So a lot of them have turned to rolling back retirement benefits and pushing them later and later in life. You might not know this, but in the US, full social security benefits are now only available at 67 years old, two years later than what was previously guaranteed. That Guys, not to sound ignorant here, but what actually, like what does social security do, right? I understand we have a social security number, but I have no idea what they actually do. I hear a lot of people talking about how they um, will be looking to receive some type of social security, but like, what exactly is it? I have no idea. That may, I'm sorry, not, not, I'm sorry to sound ignorant here, guys. That's not great. Two years more of work at 65 is pretty brutal, but that applies mostly to people who are old today. For the three of you that got lost and found this video, sorry for calling you old. Anyway, the decision to push retirement up to 67 isn't actually all that recent. It was made by Reagan back in the 80s and slowly got phased in to apply to everyone by 2023. But with so much time since our good friend Ronald called the shots, most people watching this video will probably be subject to entirely new policies. And according most to current likely. estimates, that will mean only getting your hands on social security at some point in your early 70s. At that point, most people watching this video, including me, are getting our retirement five or more years later than previous generations, despite supposedly living through the greatest ever era in human progress. You might think this is a uniquely American thing, another classic example of this country loving to make the worst choice nobody asked for. But we're actually not alone this time. Retirement benefits are getting pushed back all over the world. I mean, the, the average age of humans are, is also growing. If you're like me and you spend your time control think. effing the word increase on this specific Wikipedia page, you'll see that that word shows up over 40 times. 
decrease only shows up once. And it's not even because there's one country out there doing something special, it's because the page's editors decided to add a hypothetical scenario all the way at the bottom <laughs> just for fun. To take a more specific example, French President Macron has announced his plans to increase retirement age by three years if he gets a majority in the French Parliament. For context, the last time he tried to do pension reforms, back in 2019, this happened. Needless to say, it didn't work Good. out too well for our buddy Emmanuel. I'm gonna be honest. Good. Listen, if anyone was gonna do this, it was definitely gonna be the French guys. They're known for this. Nonetheless, Historical. there are plans in motion all over the world to gradually increase the age of retirement. If you're a normal person who's going to need social security income to finance some or most of your retirement, that means you will be working longer. Just for reference, Social Security is the largest source of income for those over 65. And around 97% of the people who make it to retirement depend on it in some capacity. So don't set your hopes on making it without Social Security. Yeah, guys, I can definitely tell you right now, this is this should be normal by the sound of it here because i can definitely tell you that the average person cannot maintain this bro like guys have you guys have you seen the numbers bro what is this here uh, guys the, the numbers are crazy um 1.8 million dollars roughly uh divided by let's say 30 years because that's kind of what you'll be using it right um yeah then divide that by the 12 months five thousand dollars okay uh, that's what you'll be getting, but how long does it actually take, right? How long do you give yourself to make that money? If it's 30 years, um, oh, it's the same number. So you, you're basically putting in $5,000 every single month, guys. All right, you have to be able to save $5,000 every single month, but hopefully you would have probably started saving for uh, retirement much, much earlier than that, right? So let's say... Um, 50 years 50, 55 years <laughs> it's still a crazy number guys you still have, you still have to put in what almost three thousand dollars every single month to a savings account that you'll never touch and won't touch until much later on in life it's not plausible so yeah absolutely 97 percent of of americans are, are going to be receiving absolutely some type of help um during this stage here because again if you look at how much americans make versus how much they actually have to save or put forward for this it's not reachable guys at all now back up just a minute why would i say something so awful as the people who make it to retirement implying that maybe some of you won't it's almost okay. as if i had a statistic i was waiting to use at the perfect moment go ahead weird maybe i'll address that in like 20 seconds Totally unrelated, advocates <laughs> of increasing the retirement age always have the same justification. People are just living longer. We're just okay. getting so old. Funding for Social Security is in a tricky position because more people are spending more time in retirement. And since people are healthier now than they were before, it only makes sense that we should increase the age of retirement. At least, All so right. the story goes. I mean, just uh, logically, that's what the first thing that came to my, my head was. But not only is this argument pretty awful, our improvements in science and technology shouldn't be used as a justification to work more. If anything, we should be right, going I the mean, other way, shameless plug. This argument about increased life expectancy no is only technically true, and it ignores something pretty important. Something I have a shiny graph for. This is a graph of the survival rate of men in the US differentiated by income. In other words, this graph takes two groups of men, some who make a lot, others who make very little, and tracks how many are still alive at every age. The red line represents people who are wealthier than 95% of the population. The blue line represents the lowest 5% of income earners. By age 61, 20% of the poorer group are already dead. That's 20% who never made it to retirement in the first place. At 76, just a few years into retirement, oh, that number jumps to whoa. around 50%, whoa. while the wealthy group is still sitting above an 80% survival rate. For reference, 76 is how old Dolly Parton, Henry Winkler, and Steve Martin are. Meaning that if Dolly Parton had stayed in the 9 to 5 grind, spending time hanging out with Steve and Henry might as well be up to a coin flip. Right. It's incredibly insulting to raise the retirement age knowing Social Security is a necessity for poorer Americans when a very large chunk don't even make it to retirement with our current policies. When you aggregate all this data, the differences in life expectancy between the top 1 and bottom 1% is huge. 15 right. whole years. The poorer you are, the earlier you are likely to die, and the less likely you are to retire in the first place. Politicians are right that life expectancy has increased, but not for everyone not for the poor. 
In some cases, the life expectancy of the poorest Americans has even gone down. So not only are the poor not living any longer, these policies mean that they will spend more of their lives working as the age of retirement keeps getting okay, pushed I, up. I get it, bro. I get it. I get it. I didn't. I never thought about it like that. But okay, so yeah, it, it probably should not be raised. Oh God, guys. Many will never get to retire. The result. And like, I mean, obviously, and you're paying into Social Security every time you get paid, right? Um, so just to imagine that you're basically just financing a, a subsection of society. Oh, man. The result of the drive to push retirement back is that the poor suffer a double burden, shorter lives, and more time spent Whoa. working, while the rich enjoy double the benefits, longer lives, and more time spent in retirement since they don't have to worry about being eligible for Social Security. Right. These statistics are awful, and yet another brutal example of how punishing inequality is in this country. But the researchers I got them from actually point out something really interesting about the data. After 62 years old, wealth stops being as big of a factor when it comes to death. It okay. still matters, just to be clear, but mm. less. Why? Because 62 years old is the first time many people start being eligible for partial social security benefits. Partial? Once you get social security, your odds of living get better and start looking a little more like the odds that richer Americans have. I wonder if it's health benefits. Um, it, it, I'm guessing it's probably health oriented, guys, because I, I can definitely tell you guys that there's no chance that I'm going to be in the United States of America past the age of 50, bro. That's not happening. Um, and a lot of it has to probably do with that, guys, uh, you know, but um, it seems like most likely it's, it's health oriented. Basically, benefits start evening out the scales. If you want to phrase that in more human terms, getting Social Security earlier literally saves and extends the lives of poorer Americans, giving okay. them more time to enjoy life and not working in old age. It's not nearly on par with their wealthier counterparts, but nonetheless helps bridge that gap. What this means, and what you need to hear when politicians start pushing Social Security further back, is that they are okay with more poor people dying earlier. Oh, They're okay. okay with more people working longer and more right. people never reaching retirement. Oh, that's, well, that's nice of you. That's just what happens when eligibility gets pushed back even just a few years. Politicians know that their wealthy donors couldn't care less about the official retirement age. Right. They have no need for social security and can retire whenever they want. But at the end of the day, the later politicians draw the line on retirement, the luckier or the wealthier you have to be to enjoy it. You can argue this is a necessary solution to make social security financially solvent, but it's clearly the worst one. Financing programs doesn't have to cause the immiseration of senior citizens in already precarious situations. You might think, well, that sucks, but I'll be okay. I have a job and I started working pretty young. Technically, I should be fine without Social Security for a couple extra years, and then I can probably afford to retire before getting benefits. And oh, if it were only that simple, my sweet summer child. Retirement literally- Bro, somebody called me a summer child the other day. Right? And I have no idea what that means. He just said it. So obviously, apparently, it's a popularized word. All right, please, guys, let me know in the comments. really isn't what it used to be. <laughs> Back in the 20th century, Summer people child. relied mostly on pensions for retirement. Basically, employers would calculate and then finance retirement based on a person's years spent working and things like life expectancy. Well, Pretty solid years, service, right? covered around 40% of the U.S. workforce, and acted as a guarantee of retirement once you were done working. Pensions were stable. You knew ahead of time exactly what you would get regular payouts for the rest of your life. Your employer was the one held responsible and you weren't forced to deal with all the risk. But in yeah. 1978, that all changed after businesses looked to cut costs and maximize shareholder profits. They lobbied and got the government to step in. Out of this movement for leaner business operations came the 401k, a small section of the US tax code that turned out to have massive impacts. As you probably already know, 401ks are personal savings accounts built on salary deductions, with the main advantage being able to deduct or defer taxes primarily by avoiding capital gains tax and essentially setting money aside quote unquote tax free, sometimes with your employer contributing a little bit and misleadingly saying they're matching it. Right. This change from pensions to 401ks saves businesses a ton of money, and so pension programs got completely gutted, covering just 13% of the workforce by 2008. As it always goes, somebody had to get the raw end of that deal. And, and that turned out to be the workers. Poorest. Shocker. 401ks shift the burden of risk and cost out of the employer's hands and into that of employees. Part of the reason that's the case is that a lot of the money people are setting aside in 401ks isn't just sitting in a box. It goes into investments. 
portfolios of stocks. Although investments are relatively stable, like the S &P. stable over time, the boom and bust cycle of capitalism naturally makes some moments, moments that last several years, an awful time to retire or to be retired. If you Google things like how to protect your 401k from a recession, you'll find pages and pages of financial advisors telling retirees and people worried for their future how recessions will naturally put a strain on their retirements, telling them that they should act conservatively during these difficult economic periods, which I can't emphasize enough, they have no control over. Average, run-of-the-mill employees are burdened with risk deep into their retirements, even after they've stopped working. And like guys, like guys, I understand the whole thing, the whole idea, desire to have 401k. I personally am just like I'm so far, I'm so against it. It's crazy, guys. Um, IRA exclusively, uh, period. And I hate to think that after this impassioned rant about <clears throat> 401ks, you might think we should just go back to when times were good and more people had pensions. Because no, we absolutely shouldn't. I mean, keep in mind, I mean, IRAs are, are extremely similar, obviously, but uh, I would prefer to be able to kind of like control it like physically if I want, if, if we want to do like a like aggressive investment or or non-aggressive in investments, like keep it stable. You know what I'm saying? Pensions were already a compromise. We could have had an expansive social security system that covered most retirement costs and actually takes care of seniors this whole time. But American companies needed yet another way to twist your arm and keep you working at an awful job. After all, it's a lot harder to leave if, on top of your salary, your retirement's on the line. Right. You'd think this would all be bad enough for retirees and future members of the Gray Society. But wouldn't you believe it, it actually gets worse. For starters, saving for retirement today is incredibly difficult. In 2013, a full 52% of Americans above 55 had literally no retirement savings whatsoever. And how can you blame them? It's hard enough just to get it's by really right impossible. now, much less plan ahead. Real wages have been stagnating for decades. Benefits are a rarity in an ever more gigified economy built on the back of the retail sector. And inflation is digging ever deeper holes in domestic budgets. But all of that is relatively unsurprising. And right-wing pundits will just turn this around on individuals to say that they should just be more austere, more ascetic, and more conservative with their finances. Blaming money problems on avocado toast, or whatever the Gen X equivalent is. I don't know, plain toast? The problem with that narrative is that even when Americans are able to set money aside, even when they follow all the punishing rules conservatives hold up about living within your means despite working full-time jobs, even then, saving money for retirement happens on predatory terms. For that, we have to thank a relatively recent change. Back in 2020, the Trump Labor Department snuck in a policy concerning 401k investments. 401ks could now be invested anywhere businesses want. Employers could channel retirement savings for their employees through any sort of investment firm. And then lose everything. Which, as you might expect, meant towards firms with riskier assets and higher upfront fees. This was the product of some pretty gross lobbying by Blackstone, a private equity firm, Ooh, which Blackstone. got its wishes granted after dumping a Blackstone. cool three million dollars in a Trump-supportive super PAC. I think they moved a lot of their money recently to um, like from um, like from overall stocks into like housing. So, like, if you guys are, are wondering why there are some issues with housing. We should probably be blaming them. Thanks to this handy green wheel grease, the Trump admin waved through this change to 401ks under the guise of expanding the freedom of American workers to invest their retirement savings anywhere they want. Obviously, the real freedom this policy change guaranteed was the freedom to get fleeced. These services do not deliver better returns than low-fee stock index funds, but take big cuts at the top and use that money to advertise their very normal results as if they were the product of investing super geniuses. Between 2006 and 2015, one Oxford researcher estimates that these private equity firms made an eye-watering $230 billion, calling it the largest transfer of wealth in the history of modern finance. From a few hundred million pension scheme members to a few thousand people working in private equity. That process only got worse thanks to the freedom to use retirement funds on quote, riskier and quote, more exclusive services under the new Trump policy. And as a side note, back when he was running for office, Biden called this, quote, yet another example of President Trump putting the interests of Wall Street ahead of American workers and families. Bro, Biden, you don't have much you can say about this, bro. I'm sorry, not, not Biden. Once he got into office, his Labor Department did the same thing. There we go. Funny how that works. With all... No, bro, it's not funny. It's not funny. The left and the right 
are basically the same. Uh, there's really not much of a difference at all uh, other than how they actually deliver their message. That's it. Same. They're the same, guys. I'm sorry. All these forces conspiring against retirees, it's no surprise that many people of retirement age live out their final years in retail jobs or RVs, traveling across the country to be seasonal laborers in short-term gigs that offer them just enough to get by, no benefits, and long, strenuous work hours. Amazon is actually one of the biggest companies to have capitalized on this workforce through programs like Camper Force. They're like Marvel characters, except with the power of super exploitation. This labor Whoa. force, made up mostly of elderly people, is a boon for Amazon because since they're desperate for income and never end up sticking around for too long, they never get the chance to unionize. People who should otherwise be retired make for perfect plug-and-play labor. Now it's time for the conclusion. I've said a lot of stuff, but admittedly oh. the title and intro to this video are a little dramatic. Not Many really. of you They're not dramatic. watching should hopefully retire, at least if we go by what's happening to people entering retirement today. Right. The point of this video is not to definitively prove that you specifically won't be able to retire one day, but to alert you to some very worrying trends that, if they're not stopped and actively reversed, will make retirement an unattainable luxury that could legitimately slip out of your hands. Workers won the right to stop working in old age a century ago through policies like Medicare and Social Security. Union contracts and eventually laws were the fruit of militant labor struggles over decades. Like the weekend and vacations, any time we get off work is a prize clawed out of capital's hands by decades of working people fighting back in the streets and on the job, long before any of us were ever born. It is our responsibility to preserve these rights where they're under threat and expand them as much as possible wherever they exist. This tendency for things to get worse for the average person and for wealth to continue to accumulate in fewer and fewer hands is one of the core features of capitalism. That's what I try to teach my viewers here at Second Thought. But for most people, it's easier to imagine the end of the world than the end of capitalism. If you'd like to understand why that is, I highly recommend you check out Mark Fisher's Capitalist Realism on Audible. It's one of those books- Alright guys, so we have a, uh, an ad here. Um, guys, you know, going into this very, very specific video, I was just like, look at the title, I was like, yeah, there's no way the average person can retire based off of just the numbers. Like, the mainly the numbers that are in my head at least, right? But now we're getting more information on how even the government's not helping people, bro. That's... You know, I definitely would probably suggest you doing it on your own. If it's possible, do it on your own. But I know that it's not possible because, again, if 97% of Americans, uh, no matter left or right, guys, they're still going to be utilizing uh, Social Security, it, it should probably tell everyone that it's, it's not something that the average American is able to do. Um, like the requirement in itself, if you plan on staying in America once you retire, it's it's impossible, bro. You're gonna have to take some type of government assistance, no matter what, guys. Wow. Um, but right, listen, let me know in the comments uh, the next thing uh, from him uh, that I should be checking out, and I will get into that as soon as I possibly can. All right. And listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day, and enjoy your day uh, thoroughly.